Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, today I was uh, really praying uh, since I think uh, last week on our studies. Uh, it was speaking to me about how important is the praise and worship. And uh, today when I was praying also, I saw that God is putting that uh, weapon in everybody's hand here. Amen. That uh, is a praise and worship is a, a weapon against enemy. Amen. And you are going to win many, we win battles through praise and worship. Amen. Big, big battles. <laughs> um, now Luke chapter 19, verse 11, 12, 13, 28. So let's read this, go through this uh, whole thing. And something really uh, spoke to me in these verses. Uh, you know, if you have Bibles, you can open the Bibles, you can see, you can understand much better than looking here, if you have Bibles. Please, uh, if you... Don't mind, just make it as a habit. Please bring Bibles with you, all of you, if not on the phones, but Bibles are better <laughs> than the phones. So, um, Luke chapter 19. Um, see, if you see that um, in this um, chapter, he was speaking, he was speaking Verse after verse 9, in the ten, in the 10th verse, he was saying, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was saying that. Amen. Son of Man came to seek, has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Right? And what was lost? And, you know, you will understand. Like, people were lost. And other than people, more, more than that, more than that, kingdom was lost, right? And it's all about kingdom. Jesus, when he was on this earth, he was preaching only about kingdom. So, and in verse 11, he was saying again, there was a parable. That parable is also about kingdom again. So, in this parable, he was saying, you know, that the, the man, he went away and came back. And he given the talents to those servants to work. You know that story, right? So those who are faithful in the, in what was given to them, and for them he given the cities uh, under their control, and he told them, "Oh, you faithful servant, you are faithful in the little, so uh, much will be given, and then given cities for them, right?" So in that, you know, verse 11, he was saying, verse 11, he was saying, he was near Jerusalem. He was talking to them, you know, he was explaining to them, preaching them, talking to them. Disciples were all following after him. He was walking and he was coming near Jerusalem. So he was near Jerusalem, he was saying, and they supposed that, that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. <laughs> It was, they were coming near Jerusalem, right? They were talking and coming near Jerusalem. And they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. You know, see, um, if you just open your eyes wide and look into these things, understand, like a broad-minded, understand what was happening. He was preaching about kingdom and the time was coming for him to go and be crucified. His time was coming for him to leave. And then they were walking, coming near Jerusalem. And they were all just, the kingdom, I suppose the kingdom is going to come, appear immediately. Okay? And then he went on telling them the, this parable again. And then after finishing this parable, and then verse 28. In the verse 28, he was saying, after he had said this thing, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. He was talking, walking, going near, entered into now Jerusalem. He was entering. And then 
When he approached Beth Phage and Bethany near the mount that is called Olivet, then he was saying to his disciple, Go into the village ahead of you. As you enter, you will find a coat tied and which no one yet has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away found it as just as he had told them. They were untying the cord. They asked why. They said, okay. And then verse 37. Uh, verse uh, 35. They brought it to Jesus and they threw their coats on the cord and put Jesus on it. As he was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. As soon as he was approaching, near the descent of Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. You know, um, what I was thinking is a prophetic act. It was in a prophetic act Jesus did and showing them the kingdom is going to come to Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kingdom is going to come to Jerusalem. The way how it's going to come, how this is the way it's going to come. Jesus sitting on the donkey and when he was entering, all the people, they spread those, you know, red, like a clothes. I'm just saying red carpet. But just the, they were spreading the uh, clothes. And for the donkey to walk, it's not for the donkey, it's for Jesus, right? So, and then everybody putting, that just raising the branches of the palm. That, and then I'm saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They were even actually shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, right? And you know, that's how kingdom can come into cities. Exactly that was a prophetic act Jesus did. After he risen, when disciples in the Jerusalem, they brought the kingdom. They brought the kingdom into the Jerusalem city. So before that was happening, Jesus knew what's going to happen after he'd gone. That's what he's going to bring his kingdom. So before that, he was showing them, kingdom will come this way. Kingdom will come this way. The people of God, the people of God, if they honor the king, if they honor the king and praise him and worship him and praise him with a shout, with the, with the sound of joy, the kingdom is going to come. Amen. Exactly the same way in the Old Testament, David did that. Did we see that? First Chronicles chapter 15. First Chronicles chapter 15. David did the same. Verse 16 onwards. Verse 16. Corinthians Chronicles. Chronicles. <coughs> First Chronicles chapter fifteen from verse sixteen. Then David spoke to the chiefs of the Levites to appoint the relatives, the singers with instruments of music, harps, eyes, loud, 
sounding cymbals to raise sounds of joy. When he became a king, when he became a king, when he was like a finally they anointed him as a king, right? After the so many battles he gone through, finally they appointed him, they anointed him as a king. Then after that, so he was about to take his throne into Jerusalem. He was going to Jerusalem. So what he did is he went to the Levites and he made them to carry the ark. But and he spoke to the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their relatives, the singers, with the instruments of music, all kinds of instruments he brought them, and to raise sounds of joy. So the Levites appointed and all that, okay, uh, verse uh, um, 25 again. Uh, Shibana, those names, the priest, they blew the trumpets before the ark of God. Obedam and Jehiah also were gatekeepers for the ark. So there were also trumpets were there. So, so it was David with the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands who went up to bring up the Ark of Covenant of the Lord from the house of Obedudum with joy. You be careful the way he, he did everything. Every detail of it is so important for us today. You know, he, he put, he brought the Levites to carry the Ark and he made, like he appointed singers and with the, all the instruments, he told them, the trumpets also there, he told them to shout joy. And then he, he and the elders, he with the elders of Israel and captains over thousands. He moved with all the elders, all the leadership team. And with them, he went to bring the ark of the Lord. And because God was helping the Levites who were carrying the Ark of Covenant of the Lord, they sacrificed seven bulls. Now David was clothed with a robe of fine linen with all the Levites who were carrying the Ark and the singers and the leader of the singing with the singers. David also wore an ephod of linen. So this is how they brought the Ark of the Lord. And when it is coming, what was he doing? Um... It happened when the Ark of the Covenant Lord came to the city of David. Okay, that's uh, the next chapter 16. Okay, you know that the way how they were coming, right? The joyful sounds and joyful noise, and they were worshipping, and especially if you see David, the way David was worshipping. Is with all with all his body he was worshiping. He was he was moving everything of his body. He was his hands were moving, his legs were moving, his whole being was moving. You know, say so he involved his whole being in the worship. That's 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 something is something going to happen. I'm telling you, something going to happen. If you, if you really move, move yourself, move, just move yourself, move your body parts, move, move from your place and come on, start rejoicing, joyful, joyful. I'm telling you, you know, when Shaila was coming here and sharing the testament, I, let me tell you what I gone through. The huge battle I, I went the last week. It was a big battle. Nobody knew in my home. Nobody knew. I never shared with anybody. Alone I fought the battle. You know, I was, it was like, I'll tell you, it was a nausea. Could not eat. Could not digest. Could not sleep. My head was spinning. Could not stand. Could not even walk. It was a, such a battle. Could not sleep. And then what I was doing is, I, 
I, will, I said like that. I forced myself that day and I said, I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be joyful and I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship Him. And I just got up from my couch and I took all my strength and then I started dancing and dancing and jumping and jumping and worshiping God and praising God. And I, you know, sometimes they don't know why I shout like that. But I was shouting, Jesus, you are the king, Jesus. You conquered everything, Jesus. You conquered death, Jesus. You conquered this disease, Jesus. Jesus, your name is so powerful, Jesus. No demons can stand before you, the name of Jesus. No sickness can stand before you, the name itself, the dark will tremble, the demons will tremble, the problems will tremble, diseases will tremble, sicknesses will tremble. God, I rejoice in you. I'm joyful in you. I make the choice to rejoice, God. I was just going up and down and just dancing and dancing and shouting and shouting. I was okay. Amen. <laughs> I was okay. And then I was, at the minute I switched my focus from God yeah. unto myself, it started again. It started again. Spinning, could not eat, nausea, everything started again. I had no, I could not effort to be in the flesh. I had to go into the spirit. For me to be alive. Amen. Yes. The whole time I kept myself engaged in the spirit. I, I fought the battle that way. I'm telling you the major weapon, nothing will work out, is not crying out will not help. I tried all that. I felt it's a pity party. I just threw it off. And this nothing is helping me. My it won't go, it's nothing, my crying is not ever going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I stopped the crying. No point of crying and no point of begging or pleading, no point. Mm -hmm. I have to be aggressive now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to be aggressive. Like, uh, you know, the kingdom of God, the forceful man will take hold of it forcefully. Amen, hallelujah. I started believing it. I started believing it, saying, God, you won this battle already. God, you already won this one I'm going through now. You won it all. You won it all. Amen. I'm victorious. I started declaring that I'm victorious. You won it all. And that's why I started praising God for it. You know, as he by his stripes. I'm healed. I was saying like that, I'm healed. I'm victorious. I'm perfect. Then I started saying, God, in the glory. That's why, that's how I brought the message of glory in Milton. It was so, you know, when you go through something, the word comes out so powerfully. Amen. When you experience it, if you don't have experience, really I'm telling you, just the words, just the words. If you really go through, that's not a word, that's a life. Amen. That's why I preached about glory in that Milton city. I was, I was experiencing glory that time. I was, I was just saying, God, in, in, in you, like in the glory, I, God started speaking to me, you know. When I was not, I could not sleep. I said, I said to myself, I can, I'm still alive. I can be alive. It's okay. Even I don't eat, I can still alive. Breathlessness come. I said like that. Even I don't breathe, I alive. Mm -hmm. I said like that. I said I just went into the spiritual realm yeah, yeah. completely. And then God spoke to me like that, you know. Is that, okay, I'll, I'll get into the glory message. Because God spoke to me about it. Um, let's, uh, you know, Exodus. Uh, Exodus. Uh, sorry, not Exodus. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 18. Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 18. Okay. I fell down before the Lord as the first forty days and nights. I made the ate bread, not drank water, because of all your sin which you had committed in doing what was evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. You know, Moses was saying that he had not eaten forty days and nights. Not only eaten, he didn't even drink water. Forty days. Two times it happened. That's what it, again 40 days he was saying. It means 80 days. First time he went 40 days and then he brought the tablet of Ten Commandments and then he threw it away, right? Because they made a golden you know, calf, threw it away. And then he had to go back again. He had to go back again for, for 40 days more. So that's what. So in these days he never drank water never eaten food, but he was alive. Tell me like it's impossible. Without food, maybe that's very hard. Without water, dehydration, even one day fasting prayer with dehydrate. If you don't drink water, I'll make sure if I'm doing fasting prayer, I'll drink water. But um, uh, for him, he did not even drink water. So that really spoke to me is that he survived because he was in the glory. Because in the glory. So, um, and then uh, Jesus also did not eat and did not drink for 40 days. Not only that, he did not even sleep. He was praying. Uh, and nights also he was praying. He did not even, of course, I think Moses also, no night for him. No, no night, nothing, just in the glory. So that, that really spoke to me. When you are in the glory, nothing is going to happen to you. Nothing. Naturally, even you don't eat, you don't drink, nothing is going to happen to you if you are in the glory. So that's what I understood. And then when God spoke to me, I was so encouraged. Okay, even I'm not able to eat, fine. I can still live in the glory. <laughs> I can still live in the glory. You know, like in the in the in the that's a supernatural realm. That's a supernatural realm. You don't need a natural things for you to live. You can live by the word of God. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God, man shall not live by bread, bread alone. But every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I, I, I can live. I can live in the glory. So I kept myself not to go down. Not to be fearful. Not to get scared. I kept myself encouraged and having a hope. I'm going to come out of this. I will come out of this. Yeah. This will be over. Yeah. This will be over. Something I'm fighting. And this will come under my feet. I was just, I kept my faith. And I kept worshipping God. I kept praising God. And when you praise God, the something is going to break. Amen. When you praise God, the something is going to break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, and then, then um, I said, that's what today I really want to encourage you, all of you. This is the way you win the battles. This is the way you win the battles. Please take away your focus from your problems. If you focus on your problem, you cannot worship God. You cannot praise God. Today we praise God. Why? Why we praise God? The first thing, the praises comes, you know. Because he saved you and he, you are accepted in the kingdom of God. And you were forgiven. And you were given eternal life. Was it not beautiful? Was it not awesome? Is that not enough for you? Is it not enough? That was it all. 
That was it. all we needed. That's the only thing we needed. That's the only thing we needed today. We were accepted in the kingdom of Amen. God. Hallelujah. We were made his children. We were forgiven. We were given eternal life. Amen. That was all we needed today. Amen. That was all we needed today. That's why praise him. That's why worship him. Hallelujah. That's why love him. The day when I came to know that I was accepted by God, I was forgiven. From that day onwards, I knew I have to do something to God. I have to do something back to God because a thankful heart, I received a thankful heart because of the, the forgiveness I received from God. That my heart became thankful towards God. And from the early days of my ministry, from the very beginning of my born again experience and study, I became thankful. The thankful heart started thinking this way. How can I bless the Lord? How can I bless the Lord? How can I show my gratitude? How can I love God? I love God through obeying God. We love God by obeying God. That's what Jesus said. Those who love me, they will obey me. Those who love me, they will obey me. Love God. Love God. I, wish I started loving God by taking the responsibilities. By taking the responsibilities of the kingdom. And I'm telling you, you know, uh, praise God for because you have given a place in the kingdom and you become a child of God. That's why you need to praise him. Okay? And also praise God because he's almighty God Amen. and he's the creator of Hallelujah. heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Praise God because nothing is impossible to him. Amen. Praise God because he conquered death also. Amen. Praise God for all the wonder. You know, I, you know, I was thinking, how come this uh, King David became a great uh, worshiper? And King and Mo Moses, Moses also. They were all, they all got something that revelation about God, and and why their their hearts were so much thankful. Why they become worshippers? Because. It's not just about only David's life. It's not just King David is only focusing on his own victories and praising God. No. He also focusing on and the victories his people got. Israelites got. Like, you know, that time, they, we, we have Bibles now, but that time, Bible was not, there were no Bibles. That time, they have to go. Uh, the, the priest only will uh, have the scroll and they read it and everybody will hear it. And the rest of the week again, they don't have the word again. So what they, they heard it, they keep on dwelling on it. They keep on meditating on it. And the word also, not much word. Only that time Moses written the word. Moses written what? Five books in his lifetime. He wrote those five books. So, first five books. So, David only must be having that information about God in those five books only. But for that, how much revelation he received by just by meditating that word. He was telling that day and night I meditate the word of God. So, only he was dwelling on that. The works what God had done for Israelites. You know, how he brought them out of Egypt. That was all about how Abraham and Isaac, how they walked with God and how Israelites and Moses, they walked out of the Egypt. Those were the things David was meditating upon it. And that's why if you read Psalms, book of Psalms, and you, 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 if you have interest, go through that. I went once and 
I just want because it's the big, biggest, longest book in the Bible is Psalms. I really I was very curious what so much that David has to worship God. To worship. What did he receive that much that he became a very intimate worshiper? And then I, I found out he was worshiping about God, like just she was saying, like a nursing mother. Like nursing mother sometimes forgets. God, like a mother, you took care of the children of Israelites when they are in the wilderness. Like a mother, you know, like a, you gave them manna and you gave them water like a mother. You, you carried them on your wings, God. And that's why he was praising God for it. This, like that, I was saying that, you know, if you meditate, so much revelation you receive about God and about his love, about his greatness. There's so much for you to praise God and worship him. It's nothing, not much about only our victories, self-victories. It's about the people of God receiving victories from God. You know, I have so much to worship God today because I have seen each one of your journey, each one of your family journey, I had seen it with my eyes. When you came here to this church, how you came, the condition you are in, and now where you are right now, I had seen the journey. I was just thinking about Shailen Dennis also, and Nina Glad, every one of you here, there's so many people, when they came here, I know them. When they came to church, they were in pain, pain and turmoil. They were going through pain and turmoil. They came like that. Today, God changed the situation. God turned mourning into dancing. This is what called mourning into dancing. And I've seen Bhavan, like how she came, crying, crying all the time. There was no joy at all. Today, rejoicing. Each one of your journey, even Satish, Prabhati, I know the day when they entered here, they cry like anything. Prabhati, I've seen all the time crying, crying. Today, they're joyful. Every one of you, every one of you, your journey. That's why I see this. When I see these things, I, I see the love of God. That's what I'm saying. You know, not just enough to receive miracles. Take time to understand the love of God in those miracles. Moses said, God, children of Israel knows your deeds. But I know your ways, God. I know your ways. Because Moses was seeking God more than heart of God, the nature of God, the love of God, who God is. You understand. That's why in the miracles you understand God very well. Don't miss the heart of God in the miracle. Enjoy the miracle, but don't miss the heart of God in the miracle. Children of Israel only enjoy the miracles, but they miss the heart of God. But Moses, he got the heart of God. You know, so today that's what I, I when, when I see these things, my faith rises up. God, the way you had done to them, my God, that is how, that is who you are. That is who you are. Your faithful God. Your faith. You want to see people rejoicing. You want to see joy on their faces. You never want people to cry. You never want people to suffer. You always want to see people to joyful. 
That's what I understand the love of God. Right? So Moses, Moses really lived that glorious life. When I read about Moses, I started crying out to God, God, it's time for me now. I want to be in the glory. I want to be in the glory. I understood, I'm telling you, like, you know, day by day when I started praising God, worshipping God, I don't know, first thing stopped in me is the nausea stopped. Nausea gone, digestion came back. I could eat. I could eat normally. I ate food. But I gained my strength back. And then the next thing got fixed in my body is that this reeling sensation stopped. I began study. And then God, okay, from here to here, now I'm okay. What about the legs? Legs still, legs still shaking, not able to walk. Then I said, I'm not going to sit and get up and <laughs> praise God. I did all that. And I did. Friday I was doing that. I was, you know, and so I did that. And then what happened? The next thing was fixed is, I think yesterday, my legs got fixed. Amen. <laughs> and then, since two, three days, slept well. <laughs> two days I could not sleep. I don't know what was it. What was the battle I was going through? What was the devil was attacking? I, then, you know, so all of a sudden, yesterday my friend like, from India calls me. And uh, say, uh, she wants to pray with me. And she prayed. And she started seeing that I was in a military dress. <laughs> military dress, using weapon in front of me, devil standing. I was fighting. And then um, God, uh, God started changing my dress code, it seems. And then God is training me, it seems, how to use the weapon against the enemy. And then, uh, then uh, the, she saw me walking in the hands of God, and God just watching my, my steps. And my feet were in his arms. He was just holding me. And then said, you know, she was saying, God is pleased even in the, these hard times, in difficult times, you still kept your purity, holiness. Even in these difficult times, you still did the right thing. You know, and then, and then, and then she saw me in a white, pure white dress, and peace. God is giving me peace. We won the great battle. Amen. You know, and then over everything over. By yesterday, everything gone. Amen. <laughs> everything Amen. gone. But the whole week I was just turmoil. Uh, you know, and that's the one thing I will do is I never share. With anybody when I'm going through. I always share after I came out. <laughs> you know, when you are in a turmoil, you should not share because people will discourage you more. <laughs> what you have, they don't have same faith. If they don't have faith, they'll discourage you. They'll pull you down. If, if that I shared with Sister Leah though. <laughs> I, told, I, I did not share with her everything, but I told her, pray for me, I'm not able to sleep. You know, she prayed two, two nights she prayed and um, you know, but uh, after third day, I think I just slept well. <laughs> so it was, but if I, what did I do when I was not able to sleep? I went down, I put beat on some messages, I was just listening to messages, I put worship music, I started worshipping, I'm <laughs> listening to word of God and reading the word. Ah, oh, but all I could do, I did everything. In the whole time. But praise God. God just, just removed everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And given me victory over Amen. this thing. Jesus. And that's why I'm saying that today, you know. That's why I understand. I understand what it means. Praising God. Yeah. I understand that. That's why, you know, I, today I'm not ashamed. Maybe you, you, if you experience, you will do that. You will know what I'm saying. If you experience that, you will never stand still. You will just move around, move around, and worship God, and praise God. 
because you know what power is there Amen. when you praise God. Amen. And what, you know, power, the battles you're going to win when you praise God. And the other thing I will tell you, the other weapon when you are going through problem is joy. Remember, never go down. Joy is the very powerful weapon against the enemy. Because all that enemy wants is sadness, sorrow, and depression. That is just a, a kingdom of darkness that coming from. But the joy is the kingdom of God. The quality of the kingdom of God is joy. Amen. And keep your joy all the time. Please, in all situations, I'm telling you, in a difficult situations, in hard times, praise God. Amen. If nothing is working out, you have a weapon in your hands. Praise Him. Hallelujah. If, if pleading is not working out, if crying out not working out, you stop that. You stop the pleading. You stop crying out. Start praising God. Amen. Start praising God. Amen. And you will see great breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can we praise God now? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand and praise Him. Hallelujah.